What's up guys, it's G here, and I'm gonna give you a breakdown of everything that went into the making, the filming, and the riding of the Slate Line. So the first thing you see is that wide shot of the quarry, of the Slate Line, and it is as intimidating in real life as it looks there. You turn up, the mountain is towering over you, and it kind of, it feels like it's looming over you. It feels like it's looking down on you and you feel so small. That massive cave you can see there is literally a vertical drop straight into the mountain. And I think it was that that drew us to this place. You know, it was, it was the challenge of seeing this and thinking, wow, I wonder if I could ride down that. So these build shots, you see it's dark, it's gray. And you know, this is February time we were building this. It was freezing cold. It's the depths of a Welsh winter. This cave that you can see here, this is literally a vertical drop. We're, we're throwing stones in to try and gauge just how deep it is. So these shots are of the build crew. These lads work so hard. And these lads are the reason projects like this can happen. Um, and we've got a really good team. Uh, on this project, you had Alf, we had Sam, uh, we had my mate Cogsy, we had Jim Munro, and these lads are literally up there first thing in the morning. And once you've got a project like this lined up, you know these lads are gonna be keen for it. You know, I give them the shout, right, we've got an idea, we're gonna get up there. And you know, these boys are there, not just from the, the build side, but whilst we're coming up with the idea as well. You know, I'll be up there, we'll be hiking up together. I'll say, you know, what do you think about this? Do you think that gap there would work? Do you think we could ride down here? And they're good riders themselves. So, you know, they're all keen to throw in their opinion. If they don't think something's gonna work, they'll tell me. And also if they think something is gonna work and I'm a bit cautious about it, you know, they'll be the first lads to say, gee, you've been a pussy. That's gonna be fine, just get it done. This shot of me at the top, is a great shot and it's probably one of my favorites because it kind of captures the, the loneliness of, of testing a line. Once you're sat on the top of the mountain and you give the guys the call that you're ready to drop in, that's always the point where you're, you're committed to it. You know, you're, you can't change your mind at that point because the cameras are rolling, they've got you to the top. You know, the, the, the time for waiting and thinking about it and deciding what's gonna happen is, is over. And it's that point you think, right, it's, it's go time now. And that is always a, such a unique feeling when that happens. Once you drop off that start platform, it's like you're jumping onto a bit of a roller coaster. This little high side I had here was luckily the only crash I had throughout the whole thing. And that is unusual for a big line like this, but at the same time, I think, knowing that I couldn't crash and knowing that there was no room for error up there, it, it focused me, you know, it made me concentrate that little bit more. It made me, it made me not make the small mistakes that otherwise, you know, I might have if, if I was a bit more blase about it. You know, the rocks are razor sharp. The slates are just waiting to slice you up if you crash. And I knew if I had a big one on, on this, in this environment, it was, it was going to be game over. Hiking up shot. I would love to say that that's how the weekend went the whole time when we were filming, but this was probably the only time I did actually carry my bike. Um, which is, in my defense, due to it being so steep. You know, it is so hard to get up there. It's loose, the rocks are tumbling, it's 45 degrees plus, and you know, I did have a lot of help with the, from the lads carrying my bike. Um, if I got to the top on my own, there's no way I'd be in any fit state to ride back down. So I am carrying it there, but probably the only time I was. And this drone shot here is incredible. It really captures the exposure. And that shot kind of, it summarizes that feeling I was talking about being at the start. You know, it's, it's lonely, it's quiet. And then here, as I drop in, is what I was talking about, how loose it is, how steep it is. You can see the rocks tumbling behind me as I'm riding. They're literally rolling and cascading. 
It's like you're in this kind of waterfall of sharp, shaly, razor sharp slate. And the exposure in the background here, you can see straight to the valley floor. And you had this feeling where if you made a mistake or you were to crash, then you would just tumble and you wouldn't stop and you would make it all the way to the bottom. And it, it just meant you had this fear the whole time you were riding. Here you can see that cliff and that vertical drop that I'm riding towards. And I'm probably a few meters from it at this point. That cliff is 600 feet vertical and it just drops straight into the center of the mountain. Um, and we didn't want to purposely go this close to it. You know, we didn't design the line to go there, but naturally when we were walking it, we quickly realized that it was going to be hard to avoid that. And it was something we discussed, you know, is this too dangerous? Because a mistake there wouldn't just re result in a, you know, a cut on your arm or a, a broken collarbone. You know, if you're going off that cliff, then, you know, that's going to be the last thing you ever do. Funny story, midway through the filming, my mum showed up and mum showing up is never a good thing because it generally means she's worried about what we're doing. You know, she's got to the point, she's pretty chilled about the fact that we're doing daft things on bikes. But when she turns up to keep an eye on it, you know that we've got to a level where she's genuinely worried. And she turned up with a medical bag and her outdoors gear on and hiked up the mountain. And she was there to try and look after me or keep an eye on me but the whole problem of having my mum there was just I couldn't deal with it I couldn't concentrate I had to send her home I felt sorry for her because you could tell how worried she was this was probably one of the shadier parts of the actual project it doesn't look it and it looks quite chill, but we had this super steep wall that we were originally just bombing straight down. And then we changed the line to link it up better, which meant halfway down this wall, I had to do a 90 degree left on this narrow off camera platform into a super sketchy flat drop. And it was just so awkward. And it took so many attempts to get because Everything about it was hard. The running was difficult. The entry to it was hard. You had to break in exactly the right place. And committing to that drop was so difficult. You know, it looks like nothing on the edit, but probably one of the harder parts of, of this whole project. You can hear on the GoPro every time I land, I'm grunting with exertion. And it's literally just me landing heavy as it knocks the air out of me. These shots show how sharp the rocks are and how much of a challenge it was for the tires and to be honest when we started this project I thought that might be an issue every rock you hit is just trying to slice the tire um, and you can see on these shots the rocks literally tumbling behind you but incredibly we had no punches I rode the whole line on the same tires we did the whole edit on the same tires um, which is testament to, to the quality of the Contis I guess um, you know I can't fault them. It was incredible and, you know, certainly not what I expected, but yeah, fair play. The drone shot coming out of this cave was probably one of my favorite parts to this project because on here, it looks so simple and it's literally a three or four second clip, but to get this shot, it was so difficult. We realized exactly in line of where the drone was going to be coming out of this cave there was a little weedy tree growing and it was perfectly placed to be in the way. Um, we tried to get around it, there was no way to, to, to remedy this situation other than roping one of the dig crew, Jamie, onto this sketchy harness and literally lowering him into this cave. And he was clambering across this off camber rock face, there's a 600 foot cliff below him, he's got a little saw to take this tree out. The other lads are literally holding on to him. It was one of the sketchiest parts to this build. I was convinced we were going to lose him into the cave, but somehow he held on. He just survived it and, and made it through. Yes, <laughs> you can see as I'm dropping into this shot, I'm literally two wheel drifting to the very outside. And then I bounce off the bottom of this cliff, off this bedrock. And just as I go through, you can see a rock poking out on the left-hand side. 
that was exactly at hand height, razor sharp edge to it. And every time I did it, I literally had to lean the bar in so I wouldn't cut my fingers off as I passed it. Now this wheelhouse was amazing. It was such a cool feature. We found it on the first day of scouting. And it's literally the old houses that would house these enormous wheels with steel cable around them that would pull the carts up and down full of rock, which is how the miners got the rocks out of the mountain. Um, and we've repurposed it to make this sketchy wooden landing. And it's so narrow, you're coming in, you can see the drop, super shady rocks and walls either side of you. And as you land, you've got a sh super short, steep wooden landing. You bounce off this landing, and then you're straight through this narrow gap that was just wider than my bars. Sharp slates either side, and there was no room for error. And something you can't see as I go through the wall and out of sight, on your left is another cliff. It's another 400 foot vertical drop. So if I clipped the wall there and got kicked or moved or got bucked as I went through, there was just gonna be a drop to catch me, which would be, again, game over. These fast shots as you go past camera are so sick. They capture the speed, you know, they capture just how quick you're going at this point. You know, you're, you're, you're further down the mountain, you're starting to build up pace. There's not much braking going on because the rocks are just too loose beneath you. And it's just a case of hanging on, soaking up the hits and just bouncing through as you go, which is probably one of the most fun parts of the track. You have sections that you've tested that worked and then you've tested this section that worked. But to film it, you have to go from one section to the next, to the next, to the next, all at high speed. You know, you're sat at the start about to drop in on a full run and you're aware of the sheer amount of data that you're gonna to have to process as you go. Because every single turn has a braking spot, it's got an entry speed, it's got an exit speed, it's got a danger like a cliff or a rock face, it's got a, something unique that you have to remember, and as you ride it, you process it, straight away you're onto the next thing, you're onto the next drop, the next gap, the next steep shoot. And it's like a video game, you know, it's coming up on you, obstacle after obstacle, just one after the other, bang, bang, bang. And to be able to process it in a relaxed, calm way as you're riding it at high speed is incredibly difficult, you know, it's a massive amount of data to blast through. The bomb down this wall was so much fun. It was literally just onto this fast, steep, slate, rocky face and let the brakes off. And again, testing this was terrifying because we had no idea how much grip there was gonna be. And once you drop in, you're committed to that line. And the bike is just getting absolutely battered as you go. You're hitting rocks, you're kicking off of square edges. The, the, the trail is narrow at this point, so you're clinging onto your line. You know if you make a mistake and blow off line, it's just boulders and there's no room for error here. The crash you see at the intro is the end of this section. It was literally me carrying too much speed out, trying to control it, trying to stop, and literally just high siding oh my off the bike. God. <laughs> Holy. Now one of the most fun parts of the track is quickly followed by one of the most terrifying parts. As soon as you've done that fast section, you know that the only thing left is the enormous road gap. And this thing was a monster. We measured the landing point out as 81 feet, which is one of the biggest gaps I've ever hit. And as you come through frame by frame, you see on the takeoff, I've got these rocks. Now they're literally to line up my takeoff point. Because the gap's so big, if I'm off angle an inch or two either way, I'm gonna be missing the landing, I'm gonna be landing off line, I'm gonna be landing into rocks and boulders, and it's gonna finish me. I'm gonna to be tomahawking through these razor sharp boulders. But you can see I'm perfectly on line with them. I'm slightly on the left, but I'm dead on line and it was the only way it was gonna work. As you go through, you see Callum, one of the cameramen down in the corner here, which really shows you the scale at this point. He's a tiny dot in the bottom. And he was filming where he expected me to be landing. And you can see, I'm looking straight down on him here and I'm still 20 or 30 feet in the air. And then as I land, 
heavy landing, bounce to a finish, and there's Athi and Cogsy. The relief was incredible. You can see here the smile on Athi's face. You can see me giving him a hug. You know, the, the audio at this point, we had, to, we had to change slightly because there were a few more swear words than uh, I let on here. But the relief is enormous, you know, giving Athi a hug, knowing that I've hit the hardest thing on the course and knowing that I've survived it as well, you know. It's an incredible feeling. At this point, you're just full of relief. You never want to hit it again. You've conquered it and you just want to walk away and, and leave it at that. 28, 29. You know, it's a big gap when Afi's counting how many seconds are in the air for. Counting the seconds. Fuck. It looks like you're going to land there. And then you, you're like, I just went straight by keep it. Keep going. Same again. Big step down. That was First insane. hit. I overshot it. <laughs> I overshot all, it. I thought, all I was worried about was that was whether you were on t online. Yeah. Because I, I thought if you're slightly offline, oh. you've fucking there's fucked literally it. nowhere to go. <clears throat> if you'd been a foot that way, you'd fucking hit that rock. Yeah. Narrow landing, really, for how big it is. Fucking right. Just bang on there. Yeah. Overshot it. Wow. I don't know if you did though. I don't know if you did do. I'm buzzing. I see these big mountain projects as you know, a bit of an evolution of everything I've done in the past. You know, it takes the skill I have of, of racing, of performing under pressure, of giving something your absolute everything to get through. And, you know, the, the grassroots riding that we've always done, you know, just riding with me and Athi where we would turn up and, and build a line and, and, and build a jump and, and spend the day testing it. You know, I think it's a, a combination of everything I've done in the past kind of funneled into these, these projects. These big mountain projects are so gnarly, but at the same time, I love them and there's gonna be more to come. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Look out for the next one and I'll see you guys soon.